stop and go traffic. It's the norm on Woodruff Road and now SEDOT is asking for your help to fix it. It's so congested all the time. Heather Sarek says running errands on Woodruff Road is torture. Because some of the lights, you're just waiting forever to get through. Project manager Jonathan Chastine says there's a solution out there. They just have to find it. Woodruff Road is the number one priority in the Greenville Pickens area. And so we recognize it's a big deal and we know we need to improve it some. You've probably seen these blue signs on the side of the road directing the public to a website, fixwoodruffroad.com, where they can fill out an eight question survey. Are we going to fix everything? Probably not. Can we address everyone's comments? Probably not. But Chastine says they'll try. The survey asks questions like how concerned are you about traffic signals or the lack of sidewalks? Then we're going to take the survey responses and we're going to develop some alternatives. Alternatives like widening Woodruff Road. Chastine says they already have some improvements in the works, like Salters Road, which opens August 21st. It connects to Millennium Parkway, the Carolina Point Parkway, those areas over there where you can bypass some of the traffic. Also, he says they plan to install a new signal system that will allow lights to change based on traffic. It's coming. We hope to have some improvement, but it's going to take some time to do it. Chastine says they will host public input meetings at two different locations on Woodruff Road on August 26th, where you can take the survey in person. Brenna McDavid, WYFF News 4 in Greenville. Turning now to our eclipse coverage, we are less than a week away, and wireless companies are taking steps to make sure that cell service stays up and running during the big event. So many of these are going to be out, and many first responders worry that the system could crash if thousands, many thousands of people, use those smartphones all at once. WIFF News Force Tim Waller is live and local at Greenville City Hall with the latest on this. Tim? Michael and Jane, it was here at City Hall that Police Chief Ken Miller asked the public not to upload their photos until after the eclipse is over. But some of the major carriers I talked to today said they're prepared for whatever may happen come Monday. In fact, here are some of their responses. AT&T Wireless has made more than 2,500 wireless upgrades across the state, including the upstate, they say, so customers can use their devices as normal. T-Mobile is also boosting coverage by adding temporary mobile sites and expanding their existing network capabilities so they say customers connect, can connect wherever they are. And Verizon Wireless will evaluate the situation as they go along to determine whether they need to increase capacity or not. No one knows if thousands of smartphones being used all at once will actually put a strain on the system. This is something police and fire agencies are preparing for if it happens. Today I interviewed a woman in downtown Greenville who said she doesn't plan to take any pictures. Selfies are great, but they're a little bit, you know, over, I think, <laughs> over exaggerated when it comes to things of that nature. I think that, that maybe you just need to kind of step back and uh, really realize that you're seeing something that is once in a lifetime and a selfie isn't that important at this moment. Even though they say they are prepared, AT&T Wireless is also asking customers to limit phone calls at the moment of the eclipse just to keep those lines open in case emergency responders need those empty lines. Tim Waller, WYFF News 4, live in Greenville. Toning down the rhetoric of Mike Diaz in Washington, what North Korea and the U.S. are saying about recent nuclear talk. And the current pollen count outside right now, trees are absent, grasses and weeds very low, and mold remains high. I'll be right back. And now the winning numbers in the South Carolina Education Lottery, pick three, eight, seven, and two. Your pick four, five, three, nine, eight, and we'll be back in just a bit. Scaling back. North Korea tones down the rhetoric after threatening a missile strike off the waters of Guam. Kim Jong-un now says he's going to watch what the U.S. will do next before he makes a decision on the attack plan. WIFF News 4's Aixa Diaz with more for us tonight. The State Department says the U.S. is willing to talk with North Korea, but the regime has to show it's serious about giving up its nuclear ambitions. They will be met with fire and fury. After a week of heated rhetoric between the U.S. and North Korea, tensions seem to be easing. Kim Jong-un appears to be backing off plans to imminently launch missiles toward Guam. The Trump administration says while military action against the North is still on the table, We stand ready to defend our nation. 
Diplomacy is the preferred course of action. We continue to be interested in finding a way to get to a dialogue, but that's up to him. Yes, there are means of, uh, of starting a conversation, but we've tried that before with the North Koreans, and it's typically always wound up in a bad place. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed, the secretaries of defense and state are calling on China to do more. They're uh, North Korea's primary trading partner. We believe that they have unique leverage uh, to put pressure on North Korea. The Chinese will probably pay more lip service to this than anything else, and we're going to have to have a different kind of negotiating strategy with North Korea to combine with the economic pressure and the military deterrence if we really expect anything different to happen. The U.S. and South Korea are preparing to conduct joint military exercises next week, which are routine. The North views them as shows of force. In Washington, I'm Aixa Diaz. The United States and China relationship is strained after the president launched an investigation into Chinese trade practices. China lashed out at that U.S. investigation, but gave no hint that it, that will affect their efforts when it comes to North Korea. Now, your live Super Doppler 4 HD weather forecast. Hey, yeah, live Super Doppler 4 HD really don't show in a whole lot. We, it looks like we're in the southwestern part of York County, maybe a thunderstorm developing there, but really just a few rain showers, a couple of thunder showers developing in the North Georgia mountains, uh, really in the northwestern part of Georgia. But certainly things are fairly quiet, but it's so hot and so steamy outside that it wouldn't take much to trigger a shower or heavy thunderstorm to develop anywhere across the area, but it should remain very, very isolated. Some showers trying to develop here right into the extreme northern part of Madison County. Some showers running all the way down into just west of you folks in Mars Hill, where you had about uh, two to three to four to even five inches of rain yesterday caused some flash flooding there uh, yesterday evening in southern and southeastern part of Madison County. Right now, no watches or warnings across here because they're just rain showers, and you can see how fast they're making their way off uh, to the southeast pretty quickly. And these showers with some heavy rain moved for you folks in Gaffney earlier and now heading into right along the Chester and York County line. And another some more showers developing southwest of you folks in Union, but really that's about it. A little tiny shower here north of Greer. Live shop looking over Lake Hartwell and the marina and pretty nice out there. Plenty of sunshine, but boy, it's hot. It's 92 right now in Anderson. It's 92 also in Abbeville, Hartwell, also in Clemson, 93 in Newberry. 91 in Lawrence, also in Greenwood, and mid-80s in Asheville, and also in Hendersonville. 90 currently in Rutherfordton. And then you have the humidity levels, which of course remaining very high. Dew point temperatures in the 70s, upper 60s to low 70s, and that is muggy conditions. And so now you have the heat index. It feels like 98 in Clemson, Anderson, Lawrence, also in Greenwood. Upper 90s also in Abbeville. Feels like 102 in Elberton and 101 in Tacoa. So 94 your heat index for you folks in Rutherfordton. A little bit of a breeze in certain areas, especially in Clemson and also in Anderson, but for the most part, fairly light winds. 97 right now in Columbia, the temperature. How about the heat index? It feels like 105 right now in Columbia. Feels like 104 in Florence, 105 at Hilton Head. Look at this even on the beach. It feels like 108 degrees along the Grand Strand of Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Would you like a slice of air? Because I could just give you a slice, but that's thick. 103 in Charleston, 101 the heat index in Wilmington, and even Augusta feels like 103 right now. Hurricane Gert, yeah, it's a hurricane, and it continues to get stronger and stronger. Now, even though it's not directly going to hit the United States or any landmass for that matter, it's moving right between Cape Hatteras and there's Bermuda right there, and it's going to slide right between the two. But it is generating some pretty good surf and some dangerous rip currents, at least along the Grand Strand, as far south as the Grand Strand for this evening, a dangerous rip currents, but probably even tonight and tomorrow for the North Carolina coast. So beware if you know of anyone that's going to the beaches, and that's going to continue all the way up to the Mid-Atlantic state. So 80 mile per hour winds right now, and it could go to 85 as we get into the overnight hours, and then it'll start to weaken as it moves quickly off the northeast, heading into the North Atlantic where the water temperature is much colder, and then it's going to become really subtropical as we head into the next couple of days, and then by the end of this week into the weekend, it's going to move into that really cold water. It'll dissipate and just become the remains of Gert. So no threat to land, but watch out for those dangerous rip currents along the North Carolina and South Carolina beaches, along with some pretty good surf. The surfers are going to love that. All right, a stray evening shower or thunderstorm, only a 20, 30 percent chance of that happening just this evening. For tomorrow, same story. Another hot, muggy day. Very steamy conditions, only a 30 percent chance of that isolated afternoon or evening shower or heavy thunderstorm. Four day plus looks like this. So only a slight chance, at least in the upstate as we head toward the end of the week, a little bit better chance with the front slowly moving in from the north for the mountains and for the weekend. Uh, only a 20% chance of a shower thunderstorm in the afternoon. And of course, the big day next Monday, the great eclipse. 
Uh, only 20-30% chance of that afternoon or evening thunderstorm, so let's hope it holds off until at least after 4 o'clock, because that's when the partial eclipse will officially come to an end in the upstate. All right, umbrella winner for tonight. Congratulations to Carrie Benjamin from Easley. Well, there we're all go. waiting on the great eclipse, but also around here, and I know in your homes too. Big event. We've yeah. been waiting on Gabrielle's for so baby, long. Yeah. and she's here. Yes, she has just given birth. Uh, Gabrielle has, of course. We're hearing this as you do. Georgina <laughs> yeah. was born this afternoon. Mom and baby Yay. are doing just fine, Yay. we're told. No, we don't have a picture to show you yet, Not but yet. we will, we promise. We just mm -hmm. want to keep you tuning in. But she was born at nine pounds and two ounces. Healthy, beautiful, Ooh, wonderful. Congratulations, Gabrielle, yeah. and your whole family. Great congratulations, mm -hmm. and we'll see you very, very soon. Uh, coming up, all new on News 4 at 6, the new home of the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta United. Tonight, a little look into a state-of-the-art stadium. You unrolled that, that halo board and stood it on its end, it'd be the tallest building in the city of Atlanta. So look out there at these buildings. I mean, that tells you something. It's 1,100 feet around. They got a couple of TVs in there too. From the field of the food, how the crews are working to make Mercedes Benz Stadium fan friendly, and then some. Next at six, you don't want to miss this right here on WYFF News 4. And coming up in news for your health, experts say fewer Americans are being hurt by lightning strikes than ever before. The simple reason why, coming up. Also ahead, vital information for parents. What studies show could happen if your children simply do not get enough sleep. In tonight's For Your Health, fewer Americans are getting killed by lightning than ever before. Smartphone videos may make it seem like there are more fatal lightning strikes, but so far this year, 13 people have died after being struck. Far fewer than in the 1940s when more than 300 people were killed each year. The reason for the drop is simple. Experts say we have learned to stay inside during bad weather. Plus, there has been an increase in the use of defibrillators and the number of CPR trained bystanders. Children who don't get enough sleep may have a higher risk of diabetes. That's according to a new British study of over 4,000 9- and 10-year-olds. Researchers found kids who slept just one hour less a night watched weighed more and had higher levels of blood glucose and insulin resistance. They estimate increasing sleep time by just half an hour could lower the risk of type 2 diabetes later in life. A healthy diet and a lot of exercise can help control type 2 diabetes with less medication. Researchers in Denmark assigned a group of diabetics to an intensive lifestyle intervention, which included five to six days of exercise and a weight loss diet plan. After a year, the patient's blood glucose levels had improved slightly, but nearly three quarters had decreased their use of diabetes medications. These drugs can be expensive, cause unpleasant side effects, and may even lead to a lower quality of life. A survey examines which groups are more likely to take medication to ease symptoms of depression. The National Center for Health Statistics reports women are about twice as likely as men to take antidepressants. About 16 percent of females over the age of 12 and about 8 percent of males said they took an antidepressant sometime in the years between 2011 and 2014. Whites overall were more likely to take them compared with other races and a quarter of those on antidepressants have been on them for at least a decade. So there might be something that's different and it might be partially renovated, but we still want to be able to give people an experience. Coming up after years of use, the Malden Cultural Center scores big. Several thousand dollars worth of grant money. Where that money's going? Coming up. Coming up, the Malden Cultural Center lands a big grant and has plans to make major updates for the arts. Spartanburg gets a surprise. A visit from Danica Patrick with some lucky fans received from the NASCAR superstar. And Senator Lindsey Graham lays out his health care plan that would replace the Affordable Care Act. Live local breaking news with Nigel Robertson, Gabrielle Komarowski, and weather with Chief Meteorologist John Sesserich. This is WIFF News 4 at 5. The Malden Cultural Center will soon get a brand new look. The center received a several thousand dollar matching grant to pay for renovations. WIFF News for Aubrey Jackson with more on the work about to get done. The Malden Cultural Center on East Butler Road was at one point Malden Elementary School and this room was a cafeteria but is now an auditorium that will soon get a new look. 
The Malden Cultural Center offers everything from guitar to cooking classes. The Malden Youth Theater presents two productions a year inside the auditorium. They're going to put on The Lion King and James and the Giant Peach. Kiera Kitchings with the center says renovations are overdue. With the floor, we have you know the tile floor that was here before um, when it was a school. So we're going to take that out, put in some kind of wood floor, laminate floor, um, new ceiling tiles, put in recessed lighting for that so we can kind of, you know, create that ambiance for people when they're coming to the show. A $125,000 matching grant from the South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism will help fund the renovations. This is a rendering of what the renovated auditorium will look like. Right now, the room can seat around 300 people. The renovations will add 50 seats to the setup, along with a green room, updated lighting, and a dressing room. Adding that little space for them to change and to do their makeup and to just prep and, you know, be in their zen moment before the show. $125,000 will be funded by the city of Malden and BB&T has pledged $5,000, giving the center a total of $255,000 to work with. Renovation work is expected to start next month with the goal of having it all done by August 2019. In Malden, Aubrey Jackson, WYFF News 4. And Cultural Center staff tell us they plan to continue with classes and shows as scheduled during the renovation. You can follow those updates online by going to the website that you will see there on your screen. That's MaldenCulturalCenter.org. She is a professional race car driver. Danica Patrick made a surprise visit to Spartanburg today in town to celebrate Advance America's 20th anniversary. And before surprising the employees there at the headquarters in Spartanburg, Patrick surprised some of the customers. She came to an Advance America Center on Beaumont Avenue, and some of the lucky customers chosen at random got a cash prize and the chance to meet the star. Tears were shed. <laughs> she says she learned how much of an impact Spartanburg has had on companies like Advance America. It's a very cute little town, of course, too, um, which is no wonder why there are such great companies here because it attracts great people. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I think it's something to be said, somebody that stood the test of time of 20 years um, of being in an industry. It, it proves how much they help, how trustworthy they are, uh, and the quality of the company and the people involved. Aside from the surprises given by Danica Patrick today, Advance America will celebrate its big anniversary by giving away... $1,000 a day for 20 days starting in September. Sweet. Turning to weather now, we are taking a live look outside at Asheville through our Asheville SkyCam. How pretty. Oh, it's just beautiful. Chief Meteorologist John Susrich, uh, will there be thunder and lightning and lions and tigers and bears tonight? What do you say? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my is right. Uh, no. Uh, we could, we're not going to see any lions or tigers or bears, but we could see a few showers or thunderstorms. In fact, they continue to develop across the area, but only isolated, as you can see, and it's hot and it's muggy, so we can still see a shower or thunderstorm develop just about anywhere, at least between now and midnight. After midnight, I think everything's going to get pretty quiet across the area, so certainly not as uh, isolated to scattered. We had more scattered showers and heavy thunderstorms yesterday. Now it's much, much less. There's really no little piece of energy that's coming in from the west that's really triggering anything. As far as the uh, heat index feels like 100 degrees right now in Elberton, feels like 98 in Anderson, Clemson, also Lawrence, Greenwood, and 99 in Abbeville. Feels like 94 degrees for you folks in Rutherford. Of course, next Monday, uh, however, here's your eclipse forecast. It still looks like very warm, humid conditions. Uh, just a 30% chance of an isolated shower or thunderstorm around during the eclipse itself. Very warm, but once we have totality, the temperature will start to drop, which will be pretty interesting. We'll see how far it drops when we have total darkness for at least a couple of minutes or so during the eclipse. But uh, this could actually go down, this percentage, because some of the computer models are printing that out. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Now back to you, Michael and Jay. All right, John, thanks. We'll see you later on. South Carolina U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham says he has the fix for the health care problem. And he presented his plan today. He said the solution is simple. Megan Schiller has more from Columbia. Senator Lindsey Graham says the solution is simple. Send the money back to the states and let the governors decide what to do with it. For South Carolina, that would mean a whole lot more money for the state. Right now, the state receives $694 million, but with Graham's plan, that money would increase by 125% to $855 million. He's calling it the Graham-Cassidy-Heller bill and says President Trump is interested, and now he just needs to get governors on board. From the political point of view, I hope by the end of the month to have uh, at least 25 governors on board for the block grant uh, approach. President Trump, I talked to a couple of days ago, he really likes this idea. Uh, we take up health care again in September. 
Graham says what works for health care in one state might not work for another, and this gives states the freedom to do what is best for their people. And Graham says he plans to release more information later this week on the formula that they're going to use to decide exactly how much money each state gets. He says he plans to have 25 governors on board by the time they go back this September. Megan Schiller tonight. High school football is almost back and we're getting you ready before the season uh, kicks off this Friday. Each week we're going to let the fans, yes you, decide what game is featured as our game of the week. It's easy to vote. You'll find the game of the week story on the WIFF News 4 mobile app or WIFF4.com. That's how you vote. And the voting ends tomorrow at midnight and then WIFF News 4. The boys will be live at the pregame festivities before kickoff. And don't forget, Friday, uh, you can help us cover the excitement. Just tweet game scores to us by using at WIFF News 4 on Twitter or simply by using hashtag WIFF. Coming up, the vice president is visiting U.S. allies in South America, but the political unrest in Venezuela is casting a large shadow over his tour. Also ahead, countdown to the eclipse. It is very much on uh, where you're going to see the best view and experts talk about the history behind this almost once in a lifetime phenomenon, unless you're Jane and mate. <laughs> Vice President Mike Pence is in South America visiting allies, but there's political unrest that is impacting his visit. NBC's Laura Aguirre with the latest for us tonight. Vice President Mike Pence and his wife arrived in Argentina this morning, their second stop on a week-long Latin American tour that started in Colombia yesterday. At a press conference with Argentina's President Mauricio Macri, Mr. Pence reiterated President Trump's assurances that Venezuela's violent attempts to consolidate power would not be tolerated. Just yesterday, Venezuela's defense minister, flanked by battle-ready troops at a Caracas army base, rejected any foreign threats to his country. Last month, Venezuela elected a constituent assembly with sweeping powers, including the writing of a new constitution, allowing President Nicolas Maduro to rule by decree. Clashes between anti-government protesters and Maduro's security forces are escalating with dozens of people killed so far. The United States will not stand by while Venezuela crumbles. The United States has many options, and we reserve those options. The vice president stopped short of defining all of the options being considered. We truly believe that by, by increasing economic and diplomatic uh, pressure on the Maduro regime, that we can achieve a restoration of democracy in Venezuela by peaceable means. President Macri echoed those remarks, adding that he does not see force as an option to resolve the conflict in Venezuela. Laura Aguirre, NBC News. And coming up all right here, all new on News 4 at 6, the new home for the Atlanta Falcons and the Atlanta United. It's not open to the public just yet, but hey, we have your first look inside. All that light, 10 stories worth of light, is brought in. So we're essentially importing uh, the downtown environment into the building. From the field to the food, what's being done to make this place, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, more than fan-friendly? That's all new next at 6. You don't want to miss this. Wow, right here on WIFF News 4. And coming up, the former press secretary who lasted less than two weeks at the White House appears on late night television. What he had to say about President Trump and his administration. Also ahead, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell speaks about the continuing protests happening on the field. And we're heading toward the peak part of the hurricane season and things are pretty active out in the Atlantic. We have three systems to talk about. I'll talk about each one of them coming up next. Continuing coverage here of some breaking news right now. Officials have new information on that inmate who escaped from the Greenwood County Detention Center today. Nathaniel Tyler Weidman escaped and is unaccounted for right now. Now they tell us he jumped off the roof of the detention center. They say it happened around 1.15 this afternoon. Multiple police agencies are helping in the search right now. There's also a $250 reward for tips that help find this man. If you see him, call 911 right away. Now to a daring sea rescue in southwest England after a person was found clinging to the rocks in a harsh tide. Officials say the search and rescue helicopter was dispatched after emergency crews couldn't get to the man by ground. The weather and offshore wind just made it especially difficult. But the man was eventually rescued 
and taken to the hospital. The U.S. State Department today released its annual report on international religious freedom. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson spoke about the report, saying religious persecution remains a prevalent problem for a majority of the world. Tillerson cited a few examples, including ISIS and its war against Christians and other religious minorities. No one should have to live in fear, worship in secret, or face discrimination because of his or her beliefs. As President Trump has said, we look forward to a day when, quote, people of all faiths, Christians and Muslims and Jews.